Hello, this video is going to be about feed forwards. Feed forwards are very important in motion control. Uh, they can help reduce the following error between the target and actual position while the system is in motion. What I have today is a motion controller and it has a, a second order simulator. In other words, it's meant for uh, simulating a hydraulic system where you have a piston uh, oil on both sides, you have a mass at the end of the piston, so basically it ends up being a mass between two springs. So you have a gain, which is the uh, number of the amount of millimeters per second per percent output, and I've got that set for 10, so at 100% I should be able to go 1,000 millimeters per second, which is one meter per second. And uh, normally on a hydraulic system, there's a rod so that the gain is different in both directions. Um, so, but I'm not going to play with that today because it's not really pertinent to feed forwards. I have a natural frequency of 10 hertz, and that's the uh, dependent upon the spring constant, uh, the square root of the uh, spring constant over the mass. And there is a uh, formula for calculating all that for hydraulic systems, and a damping factor, and. The damping factor is really a hard um, parameter to estimate, but a very typical one for hydraulic systems is about 0.333, so that's what I'm using. The natural frequency that I'm using here is a little bit low, um, much probably lower than most systems, but I'm using it because it will make some of the errors when I'm making motion uh, stand out a little bit more. So to see what's happening, I've got a plot manager, and I've got two keys, one to move to 100 millimeters, see 100 millimeters, uh, speed 500 uh, millimeters per second, um, excels and decel rates, that's about a quarter G, you know, it's uh, a little bit more than a quarter G. And then uh, the direction, well, for a hydraulic cylinder is always nearest, just going back and forth. And then uh, I have the same thing for the 400 millimeter one, except for the fact that it's uh, going to 400 millimeters. So I can start by hitting these keys and, oh geez, I've got, still have some parameters in here. Let me just zero all these things, all my gains out here, except for my proportional gain. Let's make a move to 400, okay. This is where I wanna start. Basically, uh, we are trying to go 500 millimeters uh, per second, and our proportional gain is one. So if we want to uh, uh, go 500 millimeters per second, we need to have, uh, if you remember, our uh, system gain was 10, controller gain is one. If you take uh, 500 and divide it by 10, that means we need 50% output. And if you take a look at the control output down here, where it says output uh, percent, it's about 50%. It just depends upon where I am around this curve here. It's, it's close to 50%. And you can see that the uh, actual velocity gets up to the target velocity right before it starts to decelerate. And uh, the, this is the target position. This gets updated every millisecond by the uh, motion controller. It can update faster, but I'm just using one millisecond because that's all that's necessary for this demonstration. And this is the actual position. You can see everything is color-coded. And if I take a look here, you can see the difference between the actual position and the target position is about 50 millimeters. And so if you take that 50 millimeters of error and you get 1% control output due to the proportional gain, then you get 50% output. And the 50% output is what is necessary to move at 500 millimeters per second. So, what would happen if I doubled the gain? Let's just do that. I'm going to make the gain 2 millimeters, 2% uh, per millimeter of error. Downloading. It's a little bit slow because I'm doing screen captures and running virtual machines and that kind of stuff now. Okay, so I'm going to move back to 100 millimeters and go back up to 400, so we're looking at the same thing. Now, since I doubled the gain, uh, what has happened is that the error between the target position and the actual position has reduced in half. And if we take a look here, you can see that difference is just about 25 millimeters. So at 25 millimeters times the two 
uh, percent per millimeter makes it 50 percent output and it still takes about 50 percent control output to go at 500 millimeters per second. The, the point here is that no matter how you tune the system up, if you're going to go, it's going to take a certain amount of output to go at a certain speed. So it's always, in this particular example, it's always going to take 50% output to travel the 500 millimeters per second. The question that you have when you're controlling this is how do you reduce the error and where does the control output come from? Right now, it's only coming from the proportional term. I'm going to increase the gain again. If I make this a 5, downloading, okay, now the error should be reduced to 10 millimeters. And so let's try that out. Ooh, well, you can see that didn't really turn out too well. Um, let's try four. That should, oh, let's try uh, 2.5. That should reduce the error to uh, 20 millimeters. Okay, that's okay. You can see the error between here and here is about 20 millimeters. The, uh, the problem is that if you increase the gains, eventually you're going to get to the point where it's going to start to oscillate. And I showed you the five. It doesn't seem to oscillate quite as much going in the retract direction, but you can see the error is basically reduced to about 10. But you can see the, you know, the velocity is starting to out oscillate and the control output, the green line, is starting to oscillate. So there's a limit to how high you can uh, increase the proportional gain. So how do you reduce the error? Uh, we don't want to have this following error. And the answer happens to be a uh, term called feed forwards or technique called feed forwards. And what the feed forwards try to do is predict the output. Now in this case the mathematics is pretty simple. Uh, for every uh, 10 millimeters per second I wish to move, I just have to output 1%. So let me just make this, re reduce this down to uh, 2.5 again and uh, move back. I don't want to look at all the oscillations. Oops. Move to the same location. Okay, at this point the following error is uh, 20 millimeters. Um, I know that no matter how I tune the system up, it's going to uh, take 50% output. So why not uh, do the calculation based on my target velocity, which is this magenta line here, and multiply that by um, a percent for every 10 millimeters per second, and then I can get my control output directly. So by using the system gain and inverting it, uh, what happens is that I can calculate the amount of output required to go 500 millimeters per second. And we have a really easy way of calculating that. You know, on a real system, we could just hit the uh, uh, feed forward adjust, and all it does is take information from the screen and calculates out of feed forward. Now, if, since the gain is, um, the system gain, remember, is 10 millimeters per second per percent, and if we inverted that, this really should be 0.1, but this system is uh, meant to simulate a non-perfect system, so um, you know we get 0 0.0999. And if I go backwards and do a feed-forward adjust, okay, well, it's the same in each direction. You can see that it tracks perfectly in, when we're uh, at con constant velocity. And... Uh, the following error is less than a millimeter. It's, um, what is it, 64 um, microns for our following error. So this is a huge improvement. However, if you notice, there is a little bit of overshoot here and a little bit of undershoot here. And the question is, why? Well, when you're accelerating the load, you know, 
you can kind of think of this as a mass on a spring and if you push on the spring not all that motion that you're putting on the spring is going to go into accelerating that load what's going to happen is to accelerate that load it needs force so it's going to compress that spring so that the uh, the mass will not move quite as far as what you expected so what is necessary is a uh, another term called an acceleration feed forward that is proportional to the acceleration and what it does is it compensates for the fact that the uh, oil or the spring has to compress a bit and because of that it's going to have some of that energy go into potential energy the compressed spring or compressed oil and not into motion and that is why it lags here now when it we're uh, decelerating what ends up happening is we don't need that force so that potential energy comes out of the spring the spring expands because it's no longer under a uh, as much force to keep moving and so what as the spring expands it goes out ahead of where you expected it to be and that is why it overshoots so what is necessary um, what is really necessary is the feed acceleration feed forwards and we can uh, calculate all of that uh, it's pretty simple to uh, to do um, but basically it's the uh, two times the uh, damping factor divided by the system gain which is uh, 10 millimeters per second per percent um, and then that is also multiplied by the natural frequency of the system and I have done the math and it is close to uh, 0 0.001 not quite so it still might be a little bit of error but let's move down to ah, you see how much better that is it's actually a little bit more than that so what's happening here is that there's a little bit of extra oomph being applied here to uh, reduce the error between the target and the actual position and then when we're decelerating that's actually uh, a negative acceleration so the negative acceleration times the acceleration feed forward is a negative term and it subtracts from the output and it keeps it from overshooting it. It uh, removes the potential energy from the system. Now, you can see that this still isn't uh, quite right yet. So there's another term that uh, is important and that's the jerk feed forward. Now the jerk is the derivative of the acceleration or the, it's the rate of change in acceleration. And this is necessary for hydraulic systems because the acceleration, the change in acceleration instantly require an instantaneous change in the force. And that's not possible with a hydraulic system. Um, actually, it's hardly possible with any system. But uh, on a hydraulic system, what has to happen is you have to get oil into the system to change the force. And that's usually uh, determined by the, um, the valves and the uh, amount of uh, capacity of, of the uh, hydraulic system so uh, I've done the calculations for that and that is uh, yep that's no nope, I need one more zero uh, let, let's just um, let's see 25 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, yep that's right download that I am going to retract now. And you can see that it's tracking almost perfectly here. So uh, you can see that there's a huge advantage to the to using feed forwards. I haven't even uh, played with my uh, PID gains. And what I recommend is that when you first tune up a system that uses uh, feed forwards is that you get control of the system with your uh, proportional term only and then adjust your velocity feed forward, your acceleration feed forward, and your jerk feed forward in that order. Now I can do the math, I know the model, I can do the math, I can do all these calculations and I obviously I've done all this before and I've got a little script off here to my side tells me everything. Now if you're going to do this by uh, trial and error 
and it is possible, uh, what you would uh, do is you should make use of some metric, and I use the mean squared error here. So you can see the mean squared error is 0 0.0055. The mean squared error is the difference. Uh, let's go back to the beginning here. This is a 0, 0, 0, 0. Download all this. Okay, now we're going to go back. You can see the mean squared error is 214. And the, uh, the way the mean squared error is calculated is that we take the difference between the target position and the actual position at every uh, time period along the graph. We take that error, we square it, and then we add it to the, uh, the sum, which is you know, the sum of this, all the errors that have been accumulated before. And then I divide by the number of samples. So uh, 214 is a, a very poor number for tuning. And if I uh, change the gains, let's see, let's go back to two. You see, now that's 214. I can go back to 100 millimeters. You see, the sum of squared errors went up by quite a bit. And if I go to, um, let's try three. The error should be about 16 here. So if I move my cursor here, you can see the error went, dropped down to 150. So I can tell if I'm making a change by, or a good change by looking at my mean squared error. This way I can uh, tune it manually and it removes some of the guessing. You can see the uh, error at 3% uh, per millimeter has uh, reduced the mean squared error to 150 and the error between here and here is 16.66 you know, or whatever it is, uh, 50 divided by 3. So um, you can see how the mean squared error works. And then I can uh, increase my feed forwards like I said, my feed forward should be um, uh, 0.1. This is the inverse of 10. Well, let's just say that I was guessing and I made it uh, 0 0.05. I'm going to do this for both the extend and retract direction, 0 0.05. Okay, now this should reduce my error by about half. And you can see that's about 8 and, and change, which is about half of the 16.666. So what you can see is that it still takes about 50% control output. You can get the green line here, 50% output to go 500 mil, um, millimeters per second. But I, if I estimate the output with the feed forward terms, I can reduce the error significantly. Another thing that's uh, about reality is that oftentimes you don't have uh, in the model, like I do, and you're, you're guessing, but you don't have to be exactly right. If you get within 2% of the correct output, like in this case you need to output 50%, but if you got out only 49%, you can see that even if you get close, uh, what will end up happening is you'll reduce the error significantly. So let's just make this... Um, Point zero zero nine nine. That's uh, let's just make it point zero nine point zero nine and not loading. Okay, retract, extend. You can see that it still reduces the error significantly. So m making a good guess. You know, trying to get guess as close as you can with the uh, feed forwards will reduce the following error, and that means you don't have to uh, increase the gains quite so much on the uh, on the PID. And you can get a more stable system. That concludes my video.